Hi, it's Andrew Watson from Creative Guitar Studio. It's November 17th, 2009. I'm going to be going through some questions today that have been sent uh, to me off of my YouTube channel and off of my uh, website. So we're going to start with the YouTube channel here. This first one is from uh, Colin Smith uh, from England. He's writing in and he's saying, uh, can you help me with sweep picking? Um, I just can't seem to sweep well with my picking hand, but when I put my fingers in with it, I can't seem to get it fluid. I use my fretting hand out with the pick well, but uh, putting them together seems hard when I'm doing this, so uh, I'm doing something wrong. Can you please help me? Um, sweet picking, you got to keep in mind, it's one of the most difficult things to do on guitar. It's a, a very difficult technique. I kind of came back and forth through it. You know, when I was a teenager, I'd, I'd work on it like crazy, and then I'd you know, sort of put it on the shelf for a month or so, and then I'd come back to it, and um, I worked on it a lot. It was quite a number of years even, until I started feeling like it was really natural. My suggestion to you, though, would be just keep diligent about it. Uh, there has to be a little bit of a, a bend of the hand and, and the, letting the pick kind of come back and forth at an angle. Uh, for you know, the, the downstroke and the upstroke is going to have a little bit different of an angle with the pick. Uh, so just be really patient with it. Practice it like crazy. It does come in time. I'd probably suggest working initially on three string sweeps quite a bit. Get those really fluid. Work with them in uh, terms of straight eighth notes, as tri sorry, uh, triplet based eighth notes in the beginning, then try to move into sixteenth note triplets. Um, and then I actually uh, didn't do a lot of work on four string sweeps. I kind of moved right into five string sweeps. So uh, watch my sweep picking video. It's got a lot of good information in there. Uh, next question came to us from uh, Ottawa, Ontario. I uh, didn't give his name, but uh, uh, he says here, I saw your videos on practicing scales, and I was wondering if you can give, uh, give me some advice on scale sequencing. I'm not quite sure how it works. Uh, well, scale sequencing is basically a mathematical pattern that you're going to put into a scale. So if you're starting, like a popular one out there is basically thirds. So you're going to stay diatonic, you know, let's say you're doing a major scale, let's say you're doing like G, you know, G major. So your first movement would be a major third going G to B, then you know, you'd have an A to a C. So you, you're kind of going uh, you know, root to third, second de degree to fourth degree, then you'd have a B moving to a D. So you know, there's a, a minor third interval there, so you're going from uh, you know, sort of like uh, you know, the uh, third step of the scale to the fifth step of the scale. So it's, it's sequencing out like that. So it, it, that's one example, but you know, there's loads and loads of sequences. I, I know I've mentioned it in uh, different videos I've done. Off the top of my head, I can't remember which videos that those were, but uh, you know, keep that in mind. I was going to flip over to, uh, to my um, website here, grab a couple questions off, uh, off the website, and uh, see what's going on here. This one's from uh, Pablo. Uh, he's from Spain and he's asking, my question is in similarities of two songs. Oh, a song uh, similarity thing. Oh no, and this one's also involving Chris Martin again. So his uh, question is uh, by, uh, uh, it's a song called Lucas by Natalie Imbruglia. I think that's how you pronounce her name. I've heard of her, I don't know much about her. So the song's called Natalie. It was co-written by Chris Martin. And it says here, the other one is called Luca. So one song is called Lucas, and the other one's called Luca by Suzanne Vega. The first lyrics sound really similar, and the overall, overall harmony sounds kind of the same to my ears, uh, but can you look at it? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it. I'm kind of like retired on the whole song uh, comparison thing. Um, the, uh, the reason I kind of went, got into the Satriani one is because, uh, you know, it's Joe Satriani, sort of a guitar icon, so I thought that would be kind of cool to look at that. But uh, I'll take a look at those tunes. And uh, we'll see how similar they are. Uh, I mean, it doesn't surprise me if it's Chris Martin, you know, ripping somebody off. I mean, it, it, anyway, but that lawsuit was settled out of court, I guess, in, in the end. Uh, I imagine that uh, Joe Satriani got a, uh, a settlement out of it. Anyway, the next uh, question comes to us from Lee from England. It says here, Hi, and Andrew. Thanks for your lessons. I like them a lot. Uh, uh, can you post a lesson on Lydian mode? It's coming up. I know I've had a lot of these emails about Lydian because I've done Dorian and I've done Mixed Lydian. Uh, so far, but I have not uh, touched on Lydian. That's the next one I'm doing, so it is coming. Uh, he just says here it's one of my favorite modes. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's on its way. Let me crack open another question here. This one's from Henrik. Um, it says here, Hi, Andrew. I wanted to know how to find the key of a song. And if I'm going to use modes for a solo, what fits best for any given key? Um, okay, those are basically two questions. Let me first start with the first question here. Uh, I wanted to know how you find the key of a song. Well, to do that, you have to know harmony quite well. Um, 
So you would like, you know, I, I would like you to say, you know, maybe start with something like a, a, a basic key like C major, lay out all the chords that are found within C major, so you'll have C major off the root, D minor off second degree, E minor off third, F major off fourth, G major off fifth, A minor off sixth, and then the B diminished on the, uh, on the seventh step. Now, you have to know that stuff for all keys. Luckily, it stays the same for all the keys. So no matter what key you go to, that harmony is going to basically stay the same at going major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Uh, you should also learn your seventh chord harmony just in case some seventh chords pop up on you in a tune. But uh, it's a lot of work. You have to do quite a bit of studying, and you have to know your harmony in theory. You have to know your key signatures. So um, that's basically how you find the key of the song. You have to be able to look at it. And you have to make determinations about how things are resolving. You have to watch background notes like crazy. There could be... Uh, a very generic, ambiguous progression, and yet in the background you could be getting uh, a note ringing out, and you know that's going to basically you know solidify the key center. So you have to kind of watch that stuff. It's sort of you know sometimes it can be modal things going on. And the second question, the second part of it is you know modes. How do I use modes for a solo? What fits best for a given key? Modes are sometimes used in modal progressions where there's a progression of chords that's really locked up and it, and, uh, it resolves into a, a modal um, center, but other times they're used for non-functioning chords, especially in jazz. So you might get a dominant seventh chord or a minor chord or a major chord that's non-functioning. It doesn't fit inside the key that you happen to be in at the moment. So the way you cover that chord is you use a mode to cover it. And uh, again, lots of background knowledge. You have to know your key signatures. You have to know modal theory. So a little bit of work involved there. I'm going to take one more question yet. Um, I'm looking for a guitar that's easy to maintain. This one's from uh, Landon. Uh, he's saying, uh, I need a guitar that's easy to maintain. I like Fenders, I like Gibsons, but my budget is 800 bucks. You know, if you like Fenders, you know, Gibson might be out of this price range, but if you like Fenders, you can easily find a used Fender Stratocaster for like $600. I, I see them quite often, even in the music stores around where I live. Uh, so if you're in North America, that's kind of what you're looking at around, you know, uh, 800 bucks uh, would definitely buy you a used, uh, used Strat. And uh, I, w I would say, you know, uh, 600 would be sort of like the going rate for, uh, for a used uh, Fender Strat. Um, but if you are not sure of your guitars and your guitar uh, qualities, you know, maybe take someone with you who's uh, quite well versed in, uh, uh, with guitars, you know, especially used guitars. I'm going to take one more uh, that uh, came in off of my uh, creativeguitar.ca website. Uh, this is from Dominic in Germany. I live near uh, Cologne. Really enjoy your lessons. Thank you. My question is, how do you figure out a chord to a melody? For example, an easy song like Happy Birthday to You or another folk song, for example. I have a melody and I want to play chords to it. How do I know which chords I have to play? Uh, a great tip I can give you in this direction is basically, you know, almost every melody out there, um, you, it can be broken down into a 1, 4, 5 progression. So it can function off of like, you know, uh, tonic family chords, subdominant and dominant family chords. So first of all, you got to figure out tonality. Like you know, for example, like Happy Birthday, that's a major tonality tune. But if you trace, track the melody and trace the melody out, Happy Birthday is kind of more like a mixolydian mode uh, melody. Um, but you can break you know something like Happy Birthday down into essentially a one four five progression. Just sing it. Like let's say you choose a key like perhaps uh, I don't know like G major. So you know what you'll do is you know just test and operate while you sing as you go through the one, four, and five. In the key of G major, that would be a G major, a C major, and a D major chord. And as you're going through those three chords, just test and operate the melody. And and uh, pretty much any melody out there can be sung or played, you know, with, in a, with a backdrop of a one, four, five progression. So um, you know that's my best tip for you. Uh, if you have a melody and you want to play chords to it, you know that would be my first step. You have to determine tonality, though. You got to figure out whether your melody is major or minor. And the lucky thing is, if you're doing minor, that one, four, and five, it'll be minor. They'll all be minor chords. The one, four, and five will be minors. If you're doing major, they'll all be major chords. So, you know, if it's, unless it's something really odd, or, you know, some kind of uh, extreme modal thing or something like that. Anyway, that's about all the time I have uh, for this stuff today. Thanks for tuning in again, and uh, I try and do at least one posting a week on this uh, guitar blog update channel, but uh, sometimes I can get two in. We'll see how this week goes. Perhaps I can sneak another one in. So uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care now.